Hello and welcome to the calculator guide video on what are the icons on the top of a Casio Classwiz. You can see that I have the icons from the top bar on the screen of a Casio Classwiz highlighted here. On the actual calculator you can see that I've also got two that are already displayed on there. I'm going to explain those in just a moment. I'm actually just going to progress from left to right whilst we have a look at all the icons here and what they mean and how you access them. So on the left hand side here we have an S and an A. These just indicate when you have activated either the shift or the alpha button so that you can access the shift or the alpha features on the different buttons of the calculator. So you just press it once to activate it and if you press it again then it deactivates it. Or if you select your actual shift or alpha function that will also deselect your shift as well. Moving along, the next two symbols I'm going to do together, we've got a large M and what looks like a box with an X and an arrow going to it. This is all about storing things in the memory. So if I wanted to store a number in the memory, so for example, let's say 9, if I press store, then you can see it's activated that box symbol with the arrow, indicating that the calculator is waiting for me to input a letter in which to store this particular number. So what I might do is to store it in M, which is the independent memory, so that it activates the M icon at the top of the class with. So if I press M, you can see now that not only do I have a large M there with the arrow confirming that it's M that I press, but also the M icon at the top indicating that something is stored in the independent memory. Notice how it's also activated a little black arrow here, and I will explain what that means shortly. Uh, but firstly what I'm going to do is to just erase the memory so that it eliminates that M from the top. So I'm going to go for Shift, Reset. You can initialize all at this stage, I'm go just going to delete the memory. Just bear in mind if you do this, this will delete everything that is stored in all the letters of the memory that you have. So equals AC and there we go. Now the next symbol has been on display all the time. It's a root or a radical sign with a pen next to it. This just indicates that we are in math input, or perhaps specifically in this case math input output, which is the natural display where you can display fractions, thirds, radicals, and stuff on the, on the calculator screen. Now if you are in line input output, let's just change to that shift setup and one for input output. And let's select say three for line input output you can see now that that symbol has gone it's not active in line input only once you have selected math input so let's just bring that one back shift setup one and then math input math output it's also there if you select two math input decimal output as well now next to that we have a d in fact we've got drg and some of you may be familiar with what this is referring to it's the angle unit that the classwiz is currently operating in. So let's just see if we can change those. It's shift and setup, and then two for angle unit. You can see that we've got three choices, degree, radian, and gradian. So if we change to two, then that D changes to the R. And if you press shift setup, angle unit, and then three, then it's going to change to a G. We've got gradians now. So let's just change that back to degrees. Shift setup, angle unit, and degrees. And next to DRG we have Fix and Psi. This is related to the number format in terms of how your answers are displayed on your answer line on the class whiz. So let's just have a look. It's once again in the setup menu, Shift Setup and 3 for number format. So Fix is the top option, 1, and this fixes the number of decimal places that are displayed on your answer line. You can see we've got option from 0 to 9 there. So. I'm just going to select 2 for example and if I input an integer 256 for example press equals you can see that that has fixed the number of decimal places that are shown so we've got 0, 0.00 shown there and you can also see that fix is now highlighted on the calculator let's try another example 123.456 because we are math input output then I have a fraction displayed in the first instance I'm just going to press SD and you can see what's happened here is the calculator has rounded 
that up to two decimal places because we fixed it to only display two decimal places. So it's 123.46 and it's rounded for us. Now next to that is Psi, which is referring to science notation or standard index form. So it's back to number format in the setup menu and two this time for science notation. Select this is the number of digits that are going to be displayed along with uh, times 10 to the power of. So I'm just going to select two for example. If I just stick with the number that I have here, if I just press SD, go through the fraction and then back to the decimal display, you can see it's now displayed in science notation or standard form. And it's just given two digits there, 1.2 and then times 10 to the power of two. And you can see Psi is also active on the icon at the top of the screen. Let's just try that with a larger number. So I've input my larger, larger number here. And if you press equals, you can see it has just displayed the first two digits of uh, our science notation there, 1.0. It hasn't displayed the 5, which is a little bit further down. So it's just displayed that as 1.0 times 10 to the power of 8. If you want to take it back to normal, well, that's exactly what you need to do. It's shift set up number format and then 3 for norm. And 2 allows for the maximum number of digits to be displayed on there. So press 2 equals and here you can see that my number is displayed the same as how I inputted it there. Now next to Psi is a capital E, which is referring to engineer's notation, which you can switch on. Again, once again, it's in the setup menu, shift to setup and four engineer symbol, and then one. You can see that switched on now that we have a capital E at the top. And if I input a number, let's say I input a thousand and press equals, you can see that that's now dis being displayed with engineer notation. So that's displayed as one K. K being the prefix for a thousand, such as in kilometers or kilograms. Let's try a larger number, let's say two million. And here we have two with a capital M for mega. And it also works with numbers less than one as well. If I input a small number, 0 0.003, you can see then that's displayed as three milli with a small M there. So those of you familiar with engineer's notation will know that it is every times 10 to the power of three that you get a letter on there. And I have done a previous video explaining about this. So if you're interested, you may wish to watch that. Carrying on with the icons, you can see that the next icon is an I indicating an imaginary number. So what we need to do for this is to enter complex mode on the class whiz. Just before that, I'm just going to switch engineer symbol off. And it's gone, there's the E gone. And let's go to uh, menu and then complex. And here you can see that I have it set up so that there is an I being displayed there. Firstly, indicating that we're in complex mode and secondly, indicating the way in which a complex number is currently displayed. And that is in rectangular or Cartesian form. So IE, you input a real part. So for example, four plus an imaginary part plus three I press equals. You can see that it, it just gives me my result back to me. The calculator by default is displaying them as a Cartesian form complex number. There is another way that you can express complex numbers and that is in modulus argument form. And so to access that, we just need to change that in setup. So it's shift setup and navigate down to the second page. You can see we have an option for complex two. And if we press that, we can then change from one to option two modulus argument. And you can see that the angle symbol is now being displayed at the top rather than the I. And if I press equals, it should then change my complex number to a modulus argument form of complex number. And once again, I have done a previous video explaining about this. So again, if you want to find out more information about that, then you can watch that. Now, next to the angle symbol, is well was a bit of a mystery arrow which i'll actually just save for the very end because that's not actually used on the fx 991ex version of the class whiz so i'll explain at the very end about that one but let's have a look at these darker arrows which are next to that there's a group of four directions there 
and that just indicates that there is previous information on a previous screen or a previous page that you can navigate back to have a look at. So you can see it's currently active. So if I press up, although this particular page is not that interesting because it's just the same number, but if I'd done a different calculation previously, it would go back to that. So I can scroll. The up arrow obviously indicating that's previous calculations, the down arrow indicating that I can go back to subsequent calculations. And there are some circumstances where you can navigate left. So for example, if I go to statistics mode, I just select one variable, I'll just input a quick set of data here. I'm not particularly interested in the actual results. I just want to show you the arrow and then get the statistics for one variable too. And you can see that the left arrow is showing here. That means I can navigate back and make the choice from the previous menu once again. So if I, I press left, you can see I can go back and select something else if I wanted or I can just select one variable again. And that occurs in quite a few of the menus where you have a choice prior to something being displayed there. Now a challenge for you would be to see if you can find an instance where there is a right arrow. I can imagine that's just progressing through. Now I had a little look, I couldn't find anything just casually looking. So if you come up with any instances where you get the right dark arrow, then just comment below. It'd be interesting to know. Now there's only two symbols left before we go back to discuss the white arrow previously. The pause symbol that we have here, pause symbol, just indicates that the calculator is waiting for a second part of a calculation. And the best example of this is if I go back to calculate, if I use the colon for multiple calculations, let's just put a simple calculation in here. Let's just have five plus six, and then colon 10 plus 12. If I press equals, it will calculate the five plus six, obviously 11 first and you can see that the pause symbol has been activated indicating that the calculator is waiting for a further calculation to happen so if I press equals again you can see then it's done the 10 plus 12 and the pause symbol has gone press equals and scroll around again 5 plus 6 basically the calculator saying look there's something more press equals and here's the 10 plus 12 and finally the last symbol on the right hand side there that isn't available on the emulator and is only present on solar powered models of the class Wiz. it is that the calculator is currently being powered or partially powered by use of the solar panel when you can see the sun icon there so obviously that is not going to be present on a non-solar power model anyway back to this mystery arrow so i did put a tweet out trying to discover what this was all about and uh, casio mass indeed had to upgrade it to head office to try and discover what this was all about and it's actually an indication of the simplification mode which is available on some models of the class Wiz. so not on the 991ex but for example here i have the spx the iberia model which is the Spanish Portuguese model, which will have this symbol as well as the Special Collage, which is the French version, which is equivalent to a class which is used in France. So I'll just show you how you can activate the arrow on this, but obviously it will be in Spanish. So shift and well config, which is similar to setup. I'm just going to navigate down. And the fourth option here is simplify. You have two choices here now. Automatic is the default one and basically what this is all about is that if you input a fraction normally the class Wiz will automatically simplify it for you but a feature on this particular model is that you can set this to manual and the calculator won't automatically simplify it for you only on instruction from you the user so let's just press to manual and you can see now that little arrow is activated which means the manual simplify is active so if I put in an unsimplified fraction, let's keep it simple, 15 twentieths, and press equals. On a standard model, this would automatically simplify it for you. But on this model, it's kept it as 15 twentieths with, again, that little arrow symbol indicating that this can be simplified further. If we want to manually simplify it, what we can do is we want to access simp, which is alpha and left bracket to get simp. You can see 15, 20 is simplified. What's that? Press equals. And you can see here that we've got two parts of the answer. 
three quarters is obviously the simplified fraction and five is the factor by which both top and bottom were divided by say factor of five 15 divided by five gives you three 20 divided by five gives you four and so there we go the mystery arrow explained it's for if the classwiz has a simplification model so again if your country's model of classwiz has that why don't you comment below especially if you find that particular manual simplification useful for the sort of things that you do but anyway there we go there's the full list of the icons that are displayed at the top of a classwiz i hope that you've enjoyed having a little look through this with me but that's it for this video thank you very much for watching and i will see you next time on the calculator guide